Okay, folks, this is it, section 11.8 vectors, the last page in our notes, page 6. Two more example problems and we'll be done. Okay, so I'll let you go ahead and read through this problem on your own. No need for me to read it all for you here. Uh, but the problem it involves um, a, a, a vector navigation problem where there is a, a vector that's given, and that vector is the following information. Five miles per hour along the line shown on the map, which is a bearing of north 55 degree west. So I'm just going to go ahead and sketch that vector over here. So north 55 degree west with a magnitude of 5. It's going to look something like this. So the north 55 degree west, that's this angle right here between north and the vector, which means that this angle right here is going to be 90 plus 55, or 145 degrees. So the magnitude of that vector is 5, and the direction is 145 when measured uh, from standard position. Okay, so that's my vector, and we'll call that uh, vector V. Uh, the second piece of information we have about vectors is uh, there's current in the uh, lake and it's 0.2 miles per hour to the northeast. So let's go ahead and sketch what that vector looks like. That vector will look like this. To the northeast means Again, north and east. If it's to the northeast, it means this angle right here is 45 degrees. And the magnitude of that vector is only 0 0.2. So not, not, uh, not a very strong current. Uh, this is our W vector. Okay, so what are we asked to do? Uh, what actual speed and direction is Mr. Vass rowing? Assuming he doesn't run out of energy, do you think he'll make it to put in base? So this is, our, this is the map of what's going on. And the vector V is along this path right here. Vector V is along that path. And then the vector W is, is adjusting it this way. And we don't know if the adjustment is going to take us off course and we're going to miss the, the island or not. So that's what we're asked to figure out. So again, let me put that vector back in there. So if I were to label this picture, that's the vector V. That's the vector W, and if you recall from the work we've done in a previous previous problem, using the tail-to-tip method of vector addition, this is the vector T, or the true vector. So what we're trying to do is find T and make sure we'll still uh, make it to the island. And this picture up here is not drawn to scale. The, the map is drawn to scale, but the vectors are not. So you'll have to we'll have to see what with our final... Um, magnitude and direction for vector t, what it actually looks like. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and if you recall, we had this, this equation in a previous uh, problem where we said the true vector is equal to the other vector plus the wind or water vector. Okay, so that vector v is the course that I set out on, and then the water vector uh, pushes me off course to a true vector. Uh, well, we could um, we could do the following now. We could convert V and W into their component forms, and I, I think it makes sense to do that right here. So vector V is 5 times the cosine of 145 degrees, and the sine of 145 degrees. That's the vector V, and then the vector W is 0 0.2 times the cosine of 45 degrees and the sine of 45 degrees. Okay, so uh, from this point, that this is a, a, a calculator problem and you really just uh, need to do this in your calculator and this in your calculator and what you'll get is the following. The true vector is equal to 
negative 3.954 comma 3.009er. So that is the component form of the uh, of the true vector, but that's not that doesn't really help us. What we're asked to find is the actual speed and direction. Okay, and the actual speed will be the magnitude of the vector t. So let's go ahead and calculate the magnitude of vector t. Negative 3.954. We're going to square that. Remember when you square that it goes positive. Some of you may choose just to leave that negative out of this calculation for fear of not plugging it into your calculator correctly and getting a wrong answer. So when you uh, square each of these terms, add them and then take the square root, you get a magnitude of 4.969 miles per hour. So what's the net effect of that current? It slows me down a little bit. Uh, does that make sense? Certainly. If I'm paddling this way and the water is pushing me this way, I'm, I'm fighting into that vector of the water current a little bit. So it is going to slow me down. Next thing we do is just have to find the um, the angle of that vector, the true vector, and and from its component form, we can see that the horizontal component is negative, the vertical component is positive, uh, so that puts us in quadrant two, and we need to be careful when we're in quadrant two and finding an angle because we have to adjust. If I just do the inverse tan of 3.009 divided by negative 3.954. I'm not going to get the right answer. What I'm going to do is pi minus the inverse tangent of the three, the y coordinate divided by the absolute value of the x coordinate. And then that gets me an answer of 142.7 degrees. And of course, folks, uh, this is in radians. I always keep my calculator in radians, so this output in my calculator is in radians. Then I have to do the conversion of times 180 over pi to turn it into degrees. Okay, so let, let's go ahead and answer the question now. Um, what actual speed and direction is he rowing? So this is my actual speed, and, and here's my direction when measured in standard position. Do you think I'll make it to put in bay Well, uh, there, there's only one way to answer this question. Absolutely. Well, first you can kind of look at the picture and say, well, where's an angle of 142.7? Uh, is this an angle of 142.7, the one I've drawn in here? I'm not exactly sure. And remember, this is not drawn to scale. So we do have the technology to actually take a look at an angle of 142.7. And this is not necessarily something I'd expect you to do because you don't necessarily have a protractor handy like I do. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look here and see if an angle of 142 would get me to the island. Oh wow, look at that. 142 is only going to throw me off course just a little bit from my original course. And that makes sense. If we go back and look at our original course, it was an angle of 145 measured in standard position. So we're only being thrown off 3 degrees, or 2.3 2 degrees from our original course. That's not enough to uh, that's not enough for me to miss the island as I, as I paddle out to put bay for a little R and R. Okay, so let's move on to question number ten. Now we can get rid of the approach. Well, we'll just leave it up there in the corner. Uh, question ten: As the crow flies, that means a straight line path uh, from Cleveland to Columbus is 142 miles at a bearing of south 32.7 west. Pilot takes off from Cleveland with a 25 mile per hour wind out of the northwest. What speed and direction must the pilot fly in order to reach Columbus in 35 minutes? Okay, so we have another problem where we are given a vector. We have a, a wind or a water adjustment, and we need to find out the true vector. Well, remember, the true vector is the, uh, is the one that actually gets us to Columbus. So we know this distance is the distance to Columbus, and this is the direction of our true vector. So... If we want to get there in 35 minutes, that's going to help us figure out what the magnitude of the true vector is. So the magnitude of the true vector in this problem is going to be the speed that we need. And we need to cover 142 miles in 35 minutes. 
Well, let's see. That's not that's not a convenient conversion for us. We I'd, I'd rather be in miles per hour because that's a that's a, a a unit that we would use to measure the speed of a plane. So 142 miles in. Let's see. This is going to be 35 over 60 hours. And when you work out that uh, decimal approximation is 243.429 miles per hour. And folks, I'm not going to uh, go ahead. I'm not going to work this whole problem with that many decimals. That's, um, you know what? I am going to keep it there. I'm going I'm to stick with my philosophy of don't round until the end of the problem. So I got 243.429 miles per hour, and that's that's the magnitude of my true vector. So let's just kind of sketch this picture uh, for what we're working with so far. We've got, if we consider that our starting point of Cleveland, and we have to get down to Columbus, so I'm just kind of drawing approximately to scale here. So I have this vector going from Cleveland to Columbus. My true vector is south 32.7 degrees west, and that the magnitude of that vector needs to be 243.429 miles per hour. So that that's that vector will get me to Columbus on time. Okay, so now I have the wind, right? And uh, the wind is 25 miles per hour out of the northwest. So out of the northwest, let's take a look at what that that means and and. Let's go ahead and label this. I'm going to go ahead and sketch my wind vector down here. Out of the northwest. Now this is north and this is west. So a vector out of the northwest would look like this. But I would never draw it like that, folks, because I'd want that vector drawn in standard position. The initial point or the tail of the vector should be at the origin. So a wind out of the northwest, the vector is going to look like that. And it has a magnitude of 25. And this angle here is uh, 45 degrees. And it's down in quadrant 4. So when we, when we do our calculations, we're going to call that negative 45. You could also use whatever 360 minus 45 is. Okay, so that's my wind vector. And remember... The true vector is the sum of the original vector, the heading that the pilot takes, plus the wind vector. If my wind vector is coming in like this, that means my true vector has to do something like this. So I have to steer into the wind a little bit in order to account for that wind. So that's that. That's what we're dealing with in this problem. And again, I'm, over here I'm going to go ahead and sketch... Uh, the true vector. The true vector looks like this. And again, not drawn to scale compared to this. Uh, this angle right here is 32.7 degrees. That's south 32.7 degrees west. Let me go ahead and calculate this angle real quick. Because that's the angle that I can actually use to determine the component form of this true vector. Uh, that angle is going to be 270 minus 32.7, and that's 237.3 degrees. And again, the magnitude of this is, for now, in, on this sketch, I'm just going to write 243, even though we know it's 243.429. Okay, so I think we're ready to go ahead and figure out what equation we need to solve to find out the, the vector v, which is the, the pilot's vector. So from uh, previous problems, we've, we've done this. From previous problems, we've seen that uh, the true vector is equal to the other vector plus the disturbance, wind or water. Well, in this case, we need to find V. So we need to adjust this equation a little bit. The vector V, the pilot's vector, is going to be equal to the true vector minus the wind vector. And we can go ahead and um, calculate that now because we have all the information we need right here. And again, this vector over here is our true. So the vector V is going to be equal to the true vector, which is 
0.429 times the cosine of 237.3 degrees, comma, sine of 237.3 degrees. So that's, I'm going to move this a little bit so we can not run out of space. So what I just wrote in here, that's the vector t. Now what I write here is going to be the vector w. I need to subtract 25 times the cosine of 40, oh, excuse me, negative 45 degrees. I better make that a little more clear, folks. It's not cosine of 45 because that would put me... Uh, that would put my wind vector up here in quadrant one. Cosine of negative 45 degrees. Comma, sine of negative 45 degrees. All right, so that's uh, the calculation we need to do to find uh, the pilot's vector. And when we crank that out in our calculator, we get the following. We get negative 149.188 comma, negative 222.526. And that answer right there is the pilot's vector. But that's not, we can't give the pilot that information. That doesn't do him much good. What we need to do is tell him what speed he needs to fly and what direction. So the speed is going to be the magnitude of V, negative 149.188 squared plus negative 222.526 squared. And then we take the square root of that whole thing. And we get a speed of 267 0.9 miles per hour. So that's the pilot's speed. And notice that he's got to fly a little faster than the, the, the true vector. The true vector would require 243.4 miles an hour. He's got to go a little faster than that because he's fighting uh, he's got to fly into the wind a little bit and fight, fight wind resistance. Okay, the next thing we need to know is we need to give him a bearing. So in terms of direction, we're going to take a look at theta. This angle is in quadrant 3. This, this vector is in quadrant 3 because it has a negative horizontal component and a negative vertical component. So uh, let's take a quick sketch uh, at, at what this vector is going to look like so we can actually calculate the angle appropriately. Okay, so this vector is down here in quadrant 3. If I wanted to sketch some marks on here, I'd say, yeah, this is our negative 149, our horizontal component, and the vertical component. of negative 223 approximately. So let's go ahead and, and, and this angle right here, that's the actual bearing angle I need. That's going to be a bearing of south B degrees west because this is south and this is west. Uh, but let's go ahead and find this angle right here, theta. I'm just going to measure that as a positive angle. And theta is going to be equal to the inverse tangent of the absolute value of each of these y over x. So it's going to be 222.526 divided by 149.188. And, and folks, there's uh, multiple different strategies you could use to find this angle. Multiple different strategies you can use here to find this angle. This is just one that I, I've chosen to use. Okay, so when I do this calculation, I get a theta of about 56.2 degrees. Okay, now to find that angle B, I'm going to do 90 minus 56.2 degrees. 
and that's 33.8 degrees. So what I can do now is I can say my bearing for the pilot, the bearing is south, 33.8 degrees west. And that's all the information that the pilot needs to get from Cleveland to Columbus with this wind of 25 miles per hour out of the northwest. All right, folks, that's it. You've seen a whole bunch of different problems here in section 11.8. Um, any one of these types of problems could show up on the test or on WebAssign, so that's why I did uh, probably more examples than you're actually going to need. Good luck to you in WebAssign.